a mother's song. God has given me a task so high and holy. He has blessed me with each children for my own. I must lead them daily on the path to heaven. And I care not, dare not face the task alone. Every day I must depend on Jesus. Every day to seek his face in prayer. In the secret place I find the grace he promised To the ones who meet him there If I teach them of the love of God the Father I must daily let his love shine out through me If I teach them to believe that prayer is answered I must show that faith and confidence in thee Every day I must depend on Jesus, every day to seek his face in prayer. In the secret place I find the grace he promised to the ones who meet him there. If I teach them how to meet life's short temptations, to resist the devil and his cunning lies, I must show the victory that the Lord can give me. I must keep my own life pure before their eyes. Every day I must depend on Jesus, every day to seek his face in prayer. In the secret place I find the grace he promised to the ones who meet him there. I want to invite you to open your Bible to 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 17, please, tonight, 1 Kings chapter 17. I preached from this text way back, I think it was four years ago on Mother's Day, and I won't preach the same message, but uh, of course, you know the thought there, Elijah and the widow lady, and uh, someone said it was an encouragement to them, so I looked at it and thought, you know, I'll preach from that text again on Mother's Day, w worked on it this week. And I hope uh, it'll be a blessing to you, especially you mothers. And I uh, also wanted to invite you, I forgot to mention this also a minute ago. I tell you, I forgot a lot of stuff today. I tell you the problem, I had a long nap today. And I guess uh, everything I remembered, I forgot while I was sleeping. And uh, so I've uh, been doing a little bit of, uh, been, I did a facelift, if you will, on the choir room and the handbell room. So if you want to go check that out, and uh, please feel free to do so. I've been doing that the last couple weeks. And uh, it makes the choir, it makes the choir sound so much better having that good room to warm up in, doesn't it? Didn't it sound good today? And uh, we'll see how the handbells sound next time they, next time they play. Well, it's a privilege to stand before you again on this Mother's Day. Mother's Day is a very special day. And I lost my mom. It's been almost nine years, well, it's been over nine years ago. And I think about her all the time, miss her very much. So I, since my mother's gone, I just, in, I just adopt all of you ladies to be my moms, those of you who are of age. Some of you aren't quite old enough yet to be my mom, and uh, some of you are. So all of you who are old enough to be my mom, I say Mother's Day to you personally. And I remember going through my mama's things when she, after, after she passed away and uh, found all those Mother's Day cards we made for her all over the years. Even those, it's kind of funny, even those ones that you look back on and say, man, that's just silly to save something like that. Even the ones where all you would do is put your hand on a piece of construction paper and outline it in chalk, you know, that was just, uh, that was just so special to her. Even the ones where we glued macaroni to a piece of paper, wrote out the word mom and glued down macaroni. And uh, you seen the commercial where the guy's uh, he's looking for some macaroni and he doesn't have any, so he takes one of those cards somebody made with the glued on macaroni and uh, he scrapes it off and puts it in a bowl and cooks it and eats it. I don't think she did that. And, uh, but even those simple cards like that, even when I found it was kind of interesting, I remember it, well, I don't remember because I was in first grade, but it said on there, first grade, I put on the card, Happy Day Mothers, instead of Happy Mother's Day. She even kept that one. I probably would have thrown it away, but she kept it because they were all important to her. And uh, so if you still have your mom today, don't forget to, to see her today and at least call her and talk to her and tell her how much you appreciate raising you to be the wonderful person that you are today. Amen. 
So you call your mom. It's all because of your mom. So you call her and let her know how much you appreciate that. Uh, let me read a few quotes to you. Some very famous people, what they said about their mamas. Abraham Lincoln said, I remember my mother's prayers and they followed me. They have clung to me all of my life. He also said this, Abraham Lincoln, No man is, is poor that has a godly mother. George Washington said, My mother was the most beautiful woman I ever saw. All that I am I owe to my mother. I attribute all my success in life to the moral, intellectual, and physical education I received from her. A man named is a, a Chinese writer and inventor named Lin Yutang. He said this, of all the rights of a woman, the greatest is to be a mother. Napoleon Bonaparte said these words, let France have good mothers and she will have good sons. And on a lighter note, I don't know if you guys saw the article this week in yahoo.com, but the article was called this, 10 things I learned from my mother. And I, as I read through these, I thought, man, my mom said some of these. And maybe you read these and you know these. And so if you know the punchline, you go right ahead and enjoy them all by yourself, okay? Here's what some 10 things my mama uh, taught me. My mom taught me about religion. You better pray to God that those muddy footprints come out of my new carpet. My mom taught me about time travel. If you don't straighten up right now, I'm going to knock you into the middle of next week. <clears throat> my mom taught me about logic. If you fall out of that tree and break your neck, don't you come crawling in here to me. <clears throat> my mom taught me about irony. My mom said this, and I know I've said this. If you don't stop crying right now, I'm going to give you something to cry about. My mom taught me about osmosis. Shut your mouth and eat your supper. <laughs> my mom taught me how to be a contortionist. Will you just look at the dirt on the back of your neck? My mom taught me about weather. Your room looks like a tornado went through it. How many of your moms have said that? Recently, <laughs> recently, okay. My mom taught me about receiving. You're really going to get it when we get home. My mom taught me about my roots. You've all heard this one. Close the door. You weren't raised in a barn. And then my mom taught me about justice. One day you're going to grow up and have kids of your own, and I hope they turn out just like you. That would be justice. My mom said all those things, and I have said all those things. And, uh, and so I hope you still enjoy being a mom, even though you have to say things like that to your kids. 1 Kings chapter 17. I want to begin reading in verse, uh, in verse number 8. Read all the way down to the end of the chapter, down to verse 24. So 1 Kings 17, verse number 8. The story here is of Elijah and the miracle that's performed through him for this mother. Verse 8, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, listen to this, I have commanded a widow woman to sustain thee there. To sustain thee. So, verse 10, So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was gathering of sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruse. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die." Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. Verse 14, For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruse of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. Verse 16, And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruse of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord which he spake by Elijah. Verse 17, And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick, and his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? 
And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a loft where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, thou hast also brought evil, uh, hast thou also brought evil upon this widow with whom I sojourn by slaying her son? And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come in uh, him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came unto him again, and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him unto his mother. Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know thou art a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. This morning I preached on mother's faith. And tonight I want to preach on Mama's love. Mama's love. We know this is a story about, of course, the man of God, Elijah, God using him to perform a great miracle. And we often focus on the fact that this, this lady was a widow, but we must remember she was a mother. She was a great mother. She was a mother who loved her son very, very much. And uh, I want to preach on this subject tonight, Mama's love. Mama's love. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you tonight for the Word of God. We thank you for this portion of Scripture, and there's just so many good lessons in here for us. And I do pray tonight, Lord, though, that the, the message may speak especially to the moms who are in, in here, the grandmothers, those who are raising children right now, those that have already raised their children, maybe think they can think about tonight their mom. And uh, God, so tonight you help us to, to glean from thy word tonight that which you'd have us to, so we might be better Christians. Once again, I thank you for our moms and ask you to bless them tonight, especially in a great way. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. I want to tonight look at this text, and I want you to see four, uh, four things about the love of this mother, uh, the mama's faith in four different ways. First of all, if you'll notice, this mother had is an example of a serious love, a very serious love. If you look back in verse 8 and verse 9, we find the location in which this takes place. In verse 9, the Bible says, Get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon. This is an area of Israel that's controlled. It's a place by idolatry controlled by a very wicked and a very evil and a very godless king Ahab and his beautiful wife Jezebel. And uh, we know what kind of king and queen they were, how they were out to get, of course, Elijah, and uh, they didn't want anything to do with God. They worshipped idols. They, they worshipped false gods. They built, they built high places and very wicked and very ungodly godly people. It was a place of very low morality. It was a place of very high sinfulness. Does that remind you of anywhere? That could be Stockbridge, that could be McDonough, that could be Covington, that could be Forest Park or Rex or Morrow or, or Jonesboro. It could be any city in America. Can I say to us today that our children are being raised in a place of idolatry, in a place of very low morality, in a place for the most part that's being controlled by the heathen. So this location was serious. And also, the situation was serious. In verse 7 we read that there was, a, there was a, 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 a drought. There was no rain in the land. And also in verse 12 we find that uh, all she had was a handful of meal and a little oil and a cruise. So think about that. This situation was very serious. There was a drought. Elijah, the man of God, declared there would be a drought, be three and a half years of no rain. And of course, there was three and a half years of no rain. Very little water, if any water. Very little food. It was a drought. It was also very desperate. It was so desperate, if you caught this in verse 12, Elijah's, uh, uh, the, the, the mother said, I'm going, to, I'm going to gather these sticks and go take this little bit of meal and a little bit of oil, and I'm going to go and prepare a meal for me and my son so we can die. Did you, have you ever caught that before? She just knows it's over for her. She has just enough food, not even enough food for, let's just say, a, 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 a pan of cornbread. Just a handful of meal and a little bit of oil. As a matter of fact, it's such a small amount of food that she even admits to it, if I can just find two sticks. It's only going to take two sticks. That's the size of fire it's going to take to cook this food. And can I tell you, that's not very much food. 
if just two little pieces of uh, two little sticks will, will keep the fire going long enough to cook this food, that's how small amount of food she had. Things were desperate. And I want you to think about this. In the year 900 B.C. when this took place, thereabouts, Mama didn't go down to Kroger with her Kroger Plus card and her coupons and, per, and buy food for her family. She didn't go to Aldi or even Walmart. Without rain, there would be no crops. And without crops, there would be no food. And without food, they definitely would die. No welfare, no EBT. Without any of those things, listen, she and her son, she just knew they were going to die. So she goes and gathers these two sticks for her and her son to prepare their last meal. And in her mind, they're going to eat this supper and go lay down their beds and die. Their last meal ever. That's how desperate things were. Things were serious. It was a serious situation. And in this serious situation, I want you to see that this mother had a very serious love for her child. She would do whatever it took to take care of her boy. Uh, serious situations call for a serious kind of love. That's the kind of love this mama had for her boy. So her love was an example of a serious love. And think about this, it was also an example of a special love. Uh, it's been said today already at least one time that nobody loves quite like a mom. Think about what she does in verse 10 and verse 12. In verse 10, she's out and, she, and she's gathering sticks. And in verse number 12, she she's, uh, has a little bit of oil, a little bit of, of, of meal, and she's going to go and prepare this. She, she loves her son. She's going to do the best that she can and provide for her son by making this meal. And I thought about this too. How many mamas have found themselves in a place slim, similar to this? where they may not have had very much food, may not have had very much money, and they might have just given up, given up all hope. But she's working, she's out gathering sticks, she's doing what she thinks best. And if think about this, nobody else in the family do we read of is out working. Of course, we know dad's passed away. Uh, where are the uncles? Where are the cousins? It's just her and her boy. That's a special kind of love. No one loves like a mom, and no one cares like a mom. Amen. She's going to take her last bit of food and give it to her and her boy. No one cares like a mom. In her mind, in verse 12, she's preparing for their last meal. We spend a lot of time at the ball field, and you'll hear some moms and dads say some things to their kids. Now, uh, you'll hear, of course, things moms say and things dads say to their kids playing ball are way different. Now, there's some dads, not me, of course. I would never say things like this to, to my boys. But you'll hear dads say things like this. You better swing hard and run fast. You better get in front of the ball. Come on, what's wrong with you? Catch the ball. I've never said that to my boys, I promise. Be ready for the fastball, but look for the curveball. Uh, you're never going to get a hit swinging like that. You know, important life, important things such as that is what dad will say. But since no one cares quite like a mom, you'll hear some moms say things like this. Do you need a drink of water? Don't forget your snack. Do you need more sunscreen? Do you need to go to the potty? Don't get too tired. Don't get too sweaty. Uh, be careful. Don't let the ball hit you. Go wash your hands. Look how dirty your pants are. It's interesting because moms look at things one way and dads completely different. Why is that? Because nobody cares quite like a mom. Consider this. How many times has mom stayed up all night and rocked her baby to sleep while dad just kept on sleeping? How many times has mom helped her kids on that project for school and it's due in the morning when they've had two months to get it done while dad just, just uh, chews the kid out for waiting so long to do his work? How many times has mom gone down to visit her boy in jail when dad's already given up on him? How many times has mom cried herself to sleep over a wayward son when the dad says, well, he has what's coming to him? How many times has mom believed in her child when nobody else did? No one loves like a mom, and no one cares like a mom. 
This love of this lady is an example of a serious love, of a special love, and also notice it's an example of a serving love. What is she doing in the text? She's serving. She's serving her family. She's serving the man of God. And she's serving. It's an example of a serving love. We notice in verse 13, we notice her character. Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and thou do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. We notice her character. Notice she's putting everybody else first. That's just what moms do. Something that's in the DNA, if you will, of a mom, they just put everybody else first. They put their children first. They put their family first. Here we find that's what she's doing. I think about what the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. It, it takes character to put other people first. And here we find a mom of character. She puts her family first, puts, uh, puts her child first. She does what every mother ought to do and puts the needs of her children before the needs of her very self. Her character. Notice... Interesting thought in verse 9. Notice her obedience. What do you mean her obedience? She's just out working. Look in verse 9. Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, here's what God says to the man of God, Elijah. I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Uh, God sometime in the point of time up to this point, God sometime has spoken to this lady and he says, here's what I want you to do. I want you to sustain the man of God. I want you to, 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 uh, to prepare this meal for the man of God. So she obeys him. In verse 10 and verse 11, she obeys not only God, but the man of God. We find her obedience. God has spoken to her and she does what God has told her to do. Her obedience, we notice also her faith. I don't know about you, but I think it would take much faith to, to do what God's told you to do, even though it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense, God, for me to make a meal for this preacher who's in town when I'm down to my last handful of meal, my last little bit of oil. It doesn't make sense. But can I say that's what faith does? Faith doesn't always make sense. She's simply doing what God said to do. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, For we walk by faith, not by sight. So she looked into her barrel of meal and saw just a handful, and she didn't worry about it. And she picked up her cruise, and I'm sure she probably held up to the light and said, oh my, my, we're down to our last little bit of oil. And uh, she didn't fret. She didn't try to go hide it somewhere from the man of God. No, she didn't operate by sight. She operated by faith, and, and that God allowed her to obey and trust God to provide for her and her son. When it seemed like she was down to her last meal, when it seemed like things were hopeless, when it seemed as though her family was going to starve to death, we see mama's faith and mama's love. This verse wasn't written yet, but I'm sure she must have claimed Philippians 4.19, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And maybe she quoted Psalm 37.25 that says this, David speaking, I have been young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. And I can see her talking to her son. Son, let's call him... Fred, I don't know why Fred, that's just the word that came to my head. Fred, uh, I want you to sit down, Fred, I've got to talk to you. Put the video game down, get off your iPod, turn the TV off, I want to talk to you, Fred. Uh, uh, we don't have very much food, Fred, but rest assured, God's going to take care of us. And I'm sure Fred said something like this, Mom, that's okay, I trust you. I know you're going to do what's right. Uh, I know you're going to obey God. Mom says, uh, I know you're hungry, and I, know, I, and I know you're probably worried about what we're going to eat, but don't worry, God is going to take care of us. And so Fred says, I know he will, Mama. I know he will. We see her faith. And we also see her reward. Look in verse 15 and verse 16. 
And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. She obeyed God and did what God said in verse 15. And here's the result. This is so interesting. Here's the result of her faith and obedience to the, to the word of God. And she and he and her house did eat for the rest of the day. For many days. But it's just a handful. It's just a little bit of oil in a cruise. But we see her character, her obedience, her faith, and we see her reward. God blessed her with a livelihood. Think about this. People in the area, they're dying for lack of food. They're dying for lack of water, for lack of bread. But here we find that she, she takes care of, she does what God says. She puts her family first. She obeys the man of God. As a result, she has a livelihood. Also in verse 23, God blessed her with a livelihood, yes, but also with the life of her son. The Bible tells us about how her son fell sick and died. The Bible says there was no breath in him. And so she does what any good mom does. She goes and she seeks help for her son. And she, and she goes to the man of God and she says, you got to do something. What did you come here to call my sin to remembrance and slay my son? Would you please help me? Would you please take care of my son? So, of course, we know the man of God does that. And, and he prays, Elijah prays, and her son's life is spared. We see God blessing and God rewarding mama's love. Mama's love is an example of a serious love, a special love, a serving love. But most importantly, we see tonight that her love is an example of the Savior's love. The love this lady had for her son is an awesome example of the Savior's love. It's often been said the closest thing on earth to the love of God is the love of a godly mother. Think about this mother. She loves her son. There's no doubt about it. And we know the Bible says that our Savior loves us. 1 John 4, 10. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us. Romans 5, 8. But God commendeth His love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jeremiah 31, 3. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. And John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, who's ever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Nothing like a mother's love that reminds us of the Savior's love. Yes, she loved her son, and God loves us. I read this this week. A mother loves her children even when they're dirty. A mother loves her children even when they disobey. A mother loves her children even when they're disrespectful. And a mother loves her children even when they act dumb. A mother loves her children no matter what. A man named Earl, I guess his name was Rennie or Riney. He was a preacher from the early 1900s. He said this, A mother's love is like God's love. He loves us not because we are lovable. It is because it is his nature to love and because we are his children. Can I say I'm glad God loves us when we're dirty? I'm glad God loves us when we are disobedient. I'm glad God loves us when we're disrespectful and even when we act dumb. He loves us with an everlasting love. He doesn't love us because of who we are. He loves us because of who He is. Now, this woman, she loves her son. She also, she cares for her son. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 7, we can cast our cares upon Him for He careth for you. God cares for us so much that, believe it or not, God wants what's best for us. Uh, John 10, 10, the Bible says, Jesus speaking, I'm come that they ha might have life and have it more abundantly. He cares for us. He wants us to have an abundant life and an eternal life. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ uh, our Lord. She loves her son. She cares for her son. And number three, she was there for her son. What did the boy need? Food. Needed affection. Needed somebody to care for him. And most importantly, he needed somebody, his mother, to be there for him. And she was there. And think about you moms. Think about all that takes your attention. 
Uh, some of you have, have jobs outside the home. You've got responsibilities around the house. You've got people to take care of. You have a lot to do. And more important than what we give our children, and more important than where we take our children, and more important than what we do for our children, is simply being there for our children, just like the Savior is always there for us. He's there when we need help. He's there when we, need, when we have a prayer. He's there when we cry. He's there when we need someone's shoulder to lean on. He's there when we need someone to understand us. The love of a mother is much like the love of God in that they love us, they care for us, and they're there for us. You think, man, this mom, she had a lot going on. Oh, yeah. Living in drastic times, living in a time of drought, no rain, very little food left in her, in her pantry, but yet she's got enough faith in God to believe Him and loves her son enough, she's going to do whatever it takes to feed him and take care of him, and as a result, God blesses. She's able to eat in her house for many days. She survived the drought when so many other people were dying in the drought. Mother's love. Let me close with this. When I ask you moms, well, mom, what kind of mom are you? How much love do you have? Uh, are, are, you, are you as often as possible, are, are you there for your children? Do you love your children? Of course you do. Do you care for your children? Of course you do. But the same God who was with this lady in 1 Kings chapter 17, if you're saved today, is here with you. Her love was a serious love, a special love, a serving love, and an example of the Savior's love. There's just something special about a mama's love. Please stand and we'll bow for prayer. Every head bowed, every eye closed for just a moment. It's often easy to let, especially mothers, to, to let things become priority in their life, have activities, have things that are going on at work, at school, at church, or whatever. And it'd be easy sometimes to let the priorities at home just kind of go by the wayside. And maybe tonight that's your testimony. Some things have just gotten out of whack and you're not being what you ought to be for your children and for your family. And I pray tonight that God may indeed help you with that. And maybe you need to come to the altar and